my name is Atul Arya. I am a Senior Vice President and Chief Energy Strategist at IHS Market. My name is Carlos Pasquale, Senior Vice President for Global Energy and International Affairs at IHS Market. And it's a pleasure for the two of us to have this opportunity to talk with you about issues related to climate change. Atul, the Paris Accord that was reached in 2015 was a landmark agreement. It brought in 195 nations, unanimous approval. And then this year, with the withdrawal of the United States, it's taken a setback. Does it still have momentum, or has it been stopped? I think it still has a lot of momentum, Carlos. So, you know, the U.S. is clearly uh, having a, a rethinking where, where they want to go with the U.S. federal government. But as uh, you know well, in the U.S., a lot of the action is actually happening at the state and the local level, at the city's level. And that uh, activity is not stopping. Uh, we are still seeing a very significant growth in the, in, for example, in the deployment renewables. Uh, there, are, there are policies being put in place by the state governments, uh, which they believe will uh, uh, allow them to reach the goals of the Clean Power Plan, even though the Clean Power Plan itself uh, is potentially at risk. Uh, so I, I see from, from that perspective, just within the U.S., uh, I do not see a big, uh, big impact. But what about the international level? You know, you look at the world as a whole. Do you think that will have an impact internationally? So the fascinating thing, Atul, is that we're seeing new leaders emerge, and one of them is one of the countries that at one point was seen as one of the principal enemies of, of an international climate change agreement, which is China. China is investing more now in renewable energy every year on the scale of $80 billion a year that is just absolutely transforming the sector. And as part of that, what we're beginning to see is that markets, global markets, are starting to drive further and further more investment in renewable energy that's maintaining part of the momentum so that it's not just a public policy issue, it's a question of how companies and countries respond to market opportunities. Which brings us to another point, which is that Increasingly what we see is that there are very ambitious declarations that were set for the Paris Agreement, yet at the same time there are gaps in performance between the declared nationally determined contributions. What's it going to take to bring those together, the ambitions and the actual commitments countries are making? Yeah, so you're, you're right that when we look at the national uh, NDCs, nationally determined contributions, if you add them all together, uh, they are not going to get us to the two degree uh, goal, you know, that we are going to be below the two degree goal. Uh, but there is already a lot of momentum uh, on that trend. And I think the, the one area uh, which, you know, which is I think very early days in a way is technology. And we have seen that, you know, just if you look at, for example, solar uh, photovoltaic, uh, what has happened in the last few years, six, seven years, the, the rapid drop in the cost of solar PV. Uh, I think we will see significant technology improvements like that. You know, there's a lot of discussion right now as both of us know in the matter of electric cars, EVs. And that could be a complete game changer and that would have a very big impact on the climate target. So I think technology is going to continue to advance. Whether it will come to rescue or not is, is a matter of time. But you know that some of the bigger players will have a very big impact. You mentioned China earlier uh, and China taking the leadership, India for example. So do you think these countries will stay on the path to well, one of the critical things is going to be how to take technology and translate it into investment. And so one of the key things for countries right now is how to ask the question, how do they generate and stimulate the most cost-effective investments that allow them to achieve their targets for decarbonization? And there's an important political and policy issue here that's at stake. If we simply look at the technology choices on whether or not they generate carbon, we may not end up with the best solutions. What we have to think about is that the world will have an integrated energy mix. And if we ask, how do you achieve the best integrated energy mix to get you to the outcomes, then you have a much greater chance for success. And I think one of the critical questions that we're going to start to see in China, and in particular Southeast Asia is, is, is key for this issue because they have some of the highest emissions growth in, in the world. One of the things that we've seen increasingly out till is the importance that has been placed on carbon disclosure as a tool in managing this process of emissions. And it's, it's a new area. It's been put forward as a potential solution by the Task Force on Climate-Related um, uh, Carbon Disclosure. 
Is that something? Is it ready to be utilized and deployed broadly internationally? Uh, I think it's it's not quite ready, but it is getting there. So uh, you know, we had this, as you said, TCFT, the task force for climate disclosure set up by, uh, by, the, by Mark Carney, who is the governor of Bank of England, uh, and uh, Mayor Bloomberg, mayor of New York, uh, led a task force, and they wrote a report with a number of recommendations. That those recommendations are now with, with individual countries, the members of the G20, to adopt them. Some countries will go forward, some potentially will not. But what is interesting to me, Carlos, is that the companies are actually in a way leapfrogging countries. And companies are saying that this is a good thing. Uh, there are certain issues which need to be addressed in terms of uh, making sure that the metrics and other details are sorted out. But we are on the path to that. And I think that disclosure, those disclosures, you know, the path is there. It will take a few years for us to get, get fully in compliance or fully following the, the recommendations of uh, the TCFD, but but clearly, co and companies will take uh, bigger lead than the countries. So the, will, the uh, pressures for transparency um, have been positive externally from companies, but within companies, they're increasingly adopting that. The question is how to do it in a way that's responsible. Uh, one final word, Atul. In your entire career, one of the things that you've consistently done is managed innovation. If you were to think about where are some of the key issues for innovation today, what would you say they would be? Well, as you know, the, uh, some of the interesting things which are happening, I would say, one is just on the matter of renewables energy. We talked about solar earlier, solar PV. There is still a lot more innovation to happen in, the, in the, just in the matter of solar. We have seen a big drop in the cost of panels, for example, but not in the similar drop in the cost of what they call the balance of systems, the rest of the solar uh, technology, and we will see that. Uh, batteries, of course, and, and I would say storage more broadly, beyond batteries, a uh, lot of you know, ripe area uh, for innovation. And then, of course, the use of digital technologies, how they integrate with the, the energy technologies. You know, you, you, both of us have seen the big increase in the interest from the technology companies in our Sarah Week event. And I think we will continue to see them coming in and thinking about how to uh, reduce the carbon footprint of the carbon we are consuming and how to make things much more efficient. So there are a lot of interesting things happening. That's a great way to close, Atul. For Atul Aria and Carlos Pasquale, we thank you very much for joining us. We welcome you to join us at Sierra Week 2018, in particular the Agora, our innovation hub, which will pick up exactly on these questions of innovation. Thank you.